Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. We've got quite the interesting pack. Or rare is Haphazard Bombardment, which you may know from janky land destruction decks and standard. It's still kind of like a 3 for 1, even though it's kind of slow and kind of random. It will eventually get some value. If you can ramp this out, or if you have kind of a slower, grindier deck, this could be a pretty solid addition. What else do we have? We've got a cast down as a very solid removal spell. Probably the best spot removal spell in a set, even though it does miss some pretty powerful legendaries. So there's definitely a drawback to this card, not being able to hit some of the better creatures in the set. But you can't really beat the brutal efficiency of this card. Can still kill very big 5 and 6 mana creatures for a very low cost at instant speed, so it can lead to some blowouts. We've got Grun, the Lonely King, as another great card and a great example of a creature that doesn't die to cast down. And uh, if you can attack with this, you can very quickly put the opponent in the Abyss, where they have to basically sacrifice a creature every turn so they don't die. And then looking at the commons, the ones that stand out are Gideon's Reproach as an okay removal spell, although definitely quite weaker than a cast down. And then Blink of an Eye, an excellent interactive spell in blue. I think the main considerations here are going to be Grun, Cast Down and Bombardment. I would take Blink over Reproach. I think I would take both in commons over Bombardment, since I think they're a bit more flexible and fit into more decks. It's pretty close, Grun's definitely a card that can win the game by itself. Cast Down is just brutally efficient removal. And do I have any color preferences? Not really. I'm happy to draft either color, but I do think black might be slightly better than green overall. All right, let's take a cast down. And all right, one of my favorite cards in the set, Cloud Reader Sphinx. Five mana, three, four, flying, scry two when it enters the battlefield. Bottom all those lands you no longer need. Uh, any great black card. Infection's definitely a solid playable that I'm happy to have but I'm not going to take it over a Sphinx or a Blessed Light, which are probably the two best cards in the pack. Squeeze, also playable. Don't think I'm taking that over a Blessed Light or a Sphinx. And Divination is also great. I think if I were to rank this pack, I would go Sphinx, Blessed Light, Divination, Squee, Journey Mage, and then Fungal Infection. So I think I'm... Okay, taking the Sphinx. Blue-Black is also a pretty fun archetype. Usually a bit more controlling with some card advantage, some removal. So let's take the Sphinx and then hope to wheel either Divination or Infection. If we're still in Blue-Black, that is. Since we can easily move into another color if something else ends up being open. Alright, so now we're seeing some pretty strong green cards still in the pack. Lander Elves, Salt Card, Bill of Gorger, very good. Spiders playable and then Thalad for the Sapperling deck, and Wild Onslaught can also be an absolute blowout in the right deck. So a lot of good green cards, but there's also some solid blue and black cards. Dark Bargain is also a card I like having one or two copies of in my black decks. Nice card draw spell. There's a Coldwater Snapper, which is pretty solid, although usually goes pretty late, so I don't think we have to prioritize taking the Snapper early. Whereas the Academy Journey Mage usually goes a bit sooner than the Snapper and is also a very good card. Especially if we can pick up some Wizards, which in blue and black should not be an issue. There's Caligo Skin Witch in black and then all the blue Wizards that we're accustomed to. So given our first picks, I think I'm leaning Journey Mage over pivoting into green. If we were to pivot into green, I think I would take Wild Onslaught over Thalad or any of these other green commons. But if there wasn't Journey Mage in the pack, I'm not sure if I would take one of the green cards over the Dark Bargain. I think I might, since Castan is also potentially still splashable if we're like a green deck with some mana fixing. But for now we'll take the Journey Mage. But I'll definitely keep my eye on green. If uh, green keeps flowing then we'll maybe switch. The most exciting red and white cards in this pack are the Chronicler and Tiana. But there's also some good blue and black cards. Divination, excellent. Caligo Skinwitch, great too. 
It's the wizard we mentioned when talking about Journey Mage. Also just a nice six mana play with Kicker, making the opponent discard two. Although savvy players will play around it and sand back some lands. And in green we have Grow from the Ashes, which is a nice ramp spell that can also fix your mana. So there's still some good green cards in the pack. Yeah, I think it's between Divination and Skin Witch. I don't feel the need to take a card in a different color, even though Gita Chronicler would be a solid addition too. Again, it's kind of difficult to have a ton of mana fixing in the sets unless you've got a few Scattering Surveyors. So making three color decks work outside of green is complicated. And between Skin Witch and Divination, having that early turn to play if you're facing an aggressive deck where they curve one drop into two drop is definitely nice. And then in the late game, this is usually quite strong. Divination always does the same thing. So if the opponent is empty handed, Skin Witch might not be amazing, whereas Divination is still going to be great. So it's definitely close. In terms of color commitments, we're maybe a bit more committed to blue than we are to black. But then again, the Skin Witch also synergizes nicely with the Journey Mage we already have. Let's say in the next pack we open some insane red card and want to move into the blue-red wizard deck. Then the Skin Witch might be a wasted pick, whereas Divination will still play. So definitely lots to consider in this pick. All right, let's take a Skin Witch. And then hope that blue-black works out. Had we taken Divination, we would be at least considering Fire Intervention and move into blue-red. But there's also Dark Bargain, which I mentioned is a card I quite like. And since we passed up on Divination as a card draw spell, we can make up for it by taking Dark Bargain as our card draw spell. So we'll do that. And now is a good time to pick up a Coldwater Snapper. Had an opportunity to take one earlier, but again, it's a, a card that the bots don't really take early, so you can usually get one later. And uh, I'm not a big fan of Divest. Paladin is usually mediocre, so we'll take a Snapper. And I'll happily take another Skin Witch here, so black seems relatively open. Relic Runner is nothing special, unless you're like a very aggressive, usually blue-white historic deck. Excavator can be an alternate win condition, but it's usually not very good. Abomination is usually weaker than Snapper. So we'll take a Skin Witch. And how many Dark Bargains is too many Dark Bargains? I usually draw the line at two, otherwise the life loss starts adding up. But I think I'll happily still play a second copy. Confessor is a curve filler at 4 mana, 3-3 three, three manas. Very rarely do you want to play it as at 1 mana, but is a card you can play as well if you have to. Unwind sometimes makes a cut as well, but I think I still like the second Dark Bargain over Confessor. And now we can take Syncopate, which also synergizes nicely with our instant speed Dark Bargains, so we can keep up both, and if we don't have to use Syncopate, we can play our card draw spell instead. That's one of the upsides of Dark Bargain over Divination at Sorcery Speed, even though it does cost us one more mana. And Soul Salvage is excellent. That's kind of a grindy 2 for 1 in the late game, get back our win conditions. I don't think we want to take a third one. Omnivore could make the cut, especially if we end up with some 3 mana Thalids, which leave behind a 1 1 Sapperling. I definitely like the Omnivore if we have a few of those. Otherwise, usually blue-black is relatively creature light, so in that case Omnivore is not amazing, but it does play well with Caligo Skin, which as well as a cheap creature we can devour to grow the Omnivore. Fungal Infection, also a great one that we can sacrifice to the Omnivore. Alright, so first pack went pretty well. Got a nice mix of threats, removal, counter spells, card draw spells, and discard, so... Good start to a blue-black deck. Let's see if we can keep it up in the second pack. Well, we definitely can. Zahid is definitely a bomb. Even if you just cast this for 6 mana, a 5-6 flyer is excellent. If you can cheat this out on turn 4, then it's almost unbeatable. What else is there? Just to have a look, I wouldn't mind Deep Freeze. Grun and Song of Freilies are two very powerful uncommons. Song of Freilies especially, if you can combine it with a few token makers, is pretty insane. But uh, yeah, we're not going to give up on Zahid, which is in our colors. And then we'll be on the lookout for some artifacts, but I'm not going to take bad artifacts just because we have one Zahid in our deck. Well, Eldest Reborn is also a pretty strong card that I'm not going to give up on. Also has a bit of synergy with Dark Bargain. We could put an expensive creature in our graveyard and get it back with Eldest Reborn. 
We can hope to wheel another skin witch, maybe opt wheels, but easy Eldest Reborn here. Some good green cards here, Bill of Scorcher, Thorn Elemental, but we can take a nice Academy Drake or perhaps an Acolyte. Acolyte has a bit of synergy with Soul Salvage. If we mill a creature, we can maybe get it back with Soul Salvage. Uh, same with Eldest Reborn as well. But usually I prefer Academy Drake if we have this decision just as a cheaper flyer we can play early and in a late game coming out as a 4-4 is pretty strong too. Alright, some very strong cards in this pack too. Knight of Malice, excellent 2-drop. Does get better if you're playing black-white yourself since then it'll be a 3-2 more often. But every now and then your opponent will be playing white and then this will become a 3-2 as well. And just a 2-2 hexproof from white, first strike is already a very strong card. You don't get very many powerful 2-drops like Nine of Malice, otherwise Deathbloom Thalad is also a card I like quite a bit. Second Cloud Reader Sphinx would be a great addition. I think I would take Sphinx over Thalad, question is do we take Knights or the Sphinx? I think we can go wrong with the efficiency of Knight of Malice here at 2 mana. Looking at our curve, we've got a lot of powerful things to do in the late game. Just want to make sure we can survive long enough. And Knight of Malice is a good defensive option, but also beats down pretty well. So we'll take the 2-drop here. And now we can take our Deathbloom Thalad, which plays well with our Thalad Omnivore. And is just a very good 3-drop. We can hope to wield some Fungal Infections to make the Omnivore even better. Right now, the Omnivore may or may not make the final cut in the deck. But uh, Thalad definitely will. And alright, Wizards Retort plays well alongside Dark Bargain. We've got a few Wizards in the deck, including Skin Witch. So it seems like a good addition here. Slim Voda, not a card you're gonna be casting or kicking very often. A little bit too expensive for what it does. So there's not much in this pack we want. So I guess I'll still take Slim Voda anyway. And I doubt we'll want a second Thalad Omnivore. Could take an Evangel in case we're light on two drops. Paladin, again, is pretty mediocre. I guess we could consider Power Stone Shard as a way to ramp, since we've got some expensive cards and also helps with the Zahid. Again, looking at our curve, we already have a Knight of Malice to Skin Witch, so I doubt we'll need a Cabal Evangel in this deck. So I'll take a Power Stone Shard, just in case. And then now we could take a Stronghold Confessor as kind of a filler 4-drop. Don't think we need a Partic Wanderer when we already have a Snapper and a Zahid. Still not gonna take a third Dark Bargain, I don't think. Now we might take the Cabal Evangel as a curve filler. Not a big fan of Blessing of Bells Unlock. Alright, Acolyte might make the cut. Tolarian Scholar is better than it looks. Definitely better in Dominaria draft than it is in M19 draft. It's a wizard for Retort. It's a wizard for Journey Mage, so we can play it on turn 4 more often. And a 2-3 just blocks pretty well. So do we want a Scholar or the Acolyte? I think it's close. Probably favoring the Flyer here as an extra win condition, and milling ourselves has a bit of synergy with cards like uh, Soul Salvage and Eldest Reborn too. So we'll take the flyer for now, but Scholar would be a good addition too. And I guess we'll take an Explorer now. Alright, so in the third pack, what are we missing? Yeah, overall we kind of just want to improve the card quality a little bit. Power Stone Shard is not a card I actively want to play. Confessor's pretty mediocre. Uh, Omnivore needs a bit more help. Additional Thalads or maybe some Fungal Infections. Could use a few more wizards for the journey mage. The late game's looking pretty good. Maybe some artifacts for Zahid that are playable by themselves. Maybe an arcane fly to go with the cold water snapper. And overall could use a bit more removal. Alright, well. Mirror Conjecture could be a fun one. We're putting some cards in our graveyard with Dark Bargain. And then we could use Conjecture to get them back. How are we doing in terms of instants and sorceries? We have a lot of instants, some counter spells or two dark bargains. In terms of sorceries, we have fewer soul salvage, and I think that's it. So we're not the best Mirari Conjecture deck, but it's probably still the pick here. Weight of Memory could also be a consideration as a an additional card draw spell, but we already have double dark bargain. 
and conjecture usually does more work than a uh, weight of memory would in this type of deck. So we'll take conjecture and then be on the lookout for more sorceries. The perfect pick would be something like a eviscerate, I think it's called, as kind of a removal spell at sorcery speed that we can get back with conjecture. I'm not gonna say no to a Deathbloom Thalad. That's also a card we were looking for. Sorcerer's Wand has a bit of synergy in our deck. It's an artifact for Zahid, so we can run it out on turn four. And we have a few wizards, so we can use this, equip our Caligo Skin Witch, ping the opponent for two end of turn. If we have multiple wizards and a lot of mana, we can also equip one of our wizards, shoot the opponent for two, equip a different creature, shoot the opponent for one or for two, and then kind of keep moving it until we run out of mana. And that's a pretty good way to close out the game as well, if it's stalled out. But I think we already have enough win conditions, since we have a bunch of flyers here. Academy Drake, we've got Acolyte, Sphinx, Zahid. So I don't think we're lacking win conditions. So I don't think we necessarily need to prioritize the Sorcerer's Wand. So I'd rather just take the Thalat to shore up the early game. As much as I like Slimefoot, I don't think we can splash it at this point. Could take a third Deathbloom Thalad, which I wouldn't say no to. Uh, Chain Restorement I don't consider to be particularly strong. What do we think of Torgar? Torgar can be okay, but requires quite a bit of Sacrifice Fodder to be excellent. And even though we do have two Deathbloom Thalads, I don't think Torgar is quite where we want it to be. It's going to be quite a bit better in a black-green deck where you have a bunch of Sapperling tokens. can be used to gain a bit of life. If you're down to 5, you can put yourself back to 10. But overall, Torgar is not the most impressive card. And since our late game is already pretty good, I think we just want to take the Thalad. Arcanist would also be consideration. It's a wizard, it's a 2-drop. Makes our Dark Bargains easier to cast. But I think Thalad does more for our deck. Ooh, wow. Rona's an excellent pickup, plays quite well with uh, Eldest Reborn in particular. If you can get all the value from Eldest Reborn and then get it back a second time with Rona, it's going to be difficult for the opponent to beat, and can also get back, like, I don't know, a Zahid from the graveyard if it dies, Conjecture as well. So we've got some nice synergies with Rona, so definitely take her here, plus can also just provide card advantage with the 4-mana ability. <laughs> we can take all the sagas here in blue and black. Sadly, Antiquities is not going to make the cut since we just don't have many artifacts. Academy Drake looks decent here. Another flyer and nice mana sink in the late game. Even though we do want some artifacts for Zahid, I'm not going to put a Navigator's Compass in my deck just because I have a Zahid in my deck. So we'll just take the Drake. And looks like a good spot for a Deep Freeze. As an additional removal spell, most of our win conditions have flying, so turning a bomb from the opponent into an 0-4 wall is not a big drawback. And we're not casting Primeval's Glorious Rebirth here. Alright, so now we can take the Scholar, don't have full plate since we picked up double Thalads and double Academy Drake in the meantime, but who knows. And pretty happy with the Memorial to Genius, excellent card that slots into our mana base and functions as a card draw spell if we're flooding out. Although Fungal Infection would be excellent too, since it synergizes well with our uh, Thalad Omnivore. It's also an instant we can get back with Conjecture, just cheap interaction in general. So it's actually a pretty close pick between Infection and Memorial. I don't think we're taking Snapper, since we're not going all in on the Snapper plus Arcane Flight plan. And we already have a Snapper. So between Memorial and Fungal Infection, Sadly, we did not end up with more sorceries, so right now the Conjecture might not get a ton of value out of the second chapter, but maybe that's okay. Don't think I'm playing the Power Stone Shard. Don't think I want to play the Confessor. Probably cutting the Scholar at the end of the day. And this will be more of a 5-drop. So the 5s are pretty stacked, maybe we won't play the Acolyte after all, we'll see. Think I'm happy with the 6-drops. Although we also have to consider Skin Witch as a 6-drops some of the time. We basically have our entire deck built already. And the upside of Memorial is that it improves our deck without taking up a slot in kind of our spells. 
The thing is, we already have triple Deathbloom Thalad, so we have a lot of ways to prevent taking too much damage on the ground. We have a lot of chum blockers to jump in front, and that's kind of where the Fungal Infection shines. Can take out an early play from the opponent, trade for a 2-drop, or maybe take out multiple tokens. But when we have triple Deathbloom Thalad, maybe that's not as necessary since it's not like the Fungal Infection is often taking out an important flyer, which is where the Thalad can't really help us. Yeah, the Snapper's definitely replaceable, I'm not married to it here, since we don't have any Arcane Flights and we already have a decent late game, so we could easily cut the Snapper if we wanted to, but I think here I'm probably taking the Memorial at the end of the day. Nothing here that we really want, already have an Explorer in the sideboard I think. So the last couple of cuts are going to be interesting. Now we did wield the Sorceress Wand. I'm definitely going to take it. I'm still not sure if we're going to add it to our deck though. It synergizes with Zahid and our Wizards. Don't know if that's enough to want it. Alright. So... Let's try and finalize this deck. Definitely don't want to go below 17, could even make a case for 18 lands since we've got pretty good late game, a lot of ways to filter through our deck with Dark Bargains, and we have good ways to spend our mana with Kicker, with double Skin Witch as well. So this is closer to an 18 land deck than to a 17 land deck, probably. How many Wizards do we have? We've got double Skin Witch, although we're not often playing it early. So yeah, Journey Mage will probably be a 5 drop more often than not. Conjecture is not a card we're going to play on turn 4 very often, or turn 5 rather. It's more of a late game play once we're empty handed. I'm not loving Conjecture in this deck since we only have one sorcery, but it's probably still good enough just because getting back like a Dark Bargain or a Cast Down and then getting the third chapter to double it up is quite strong. I think the Snapper is indeed cuttable. Sahid is basically a 6 drop since we don't have any artifacts. I don't think we'll play the wand since we're kind of low on creatures and wizards in general. And I don't think it's quite good enough even though we have a Zahid which could benefit from it. So Snapper is potentially cuttable. Conjecture is probably still good enough. Omnivore is definitely keepable with triple Thalad in our deck. And Drake is fine, Rona's good. Deep Freeze looks okay. I think I still like the Retort to play alongside Dark Bargains. Soul Salvage is also potentially cuttable but it's our only sorcery alongside Conjecture. So that's kind of why I want it still in the deck. Could make a case for Acolytes, although the 5 drops are pretty crowded. Plays well with Soul Salvage and Eldest Reborn, and is an additional flyer to help us close out the game. Although we already have Double Drake, Sphinx, Sahid, so it's not like we're lacking in the flying department. Oh yeah, Acolyte also plays well with Conjecture, helping us mill additional instants and sorceries. So Acolyte might be better than a Snapper. It's kind of matchup dependent, like if we face a control deck then Snapper might be the better card. If we're facing a more mid-rangey deck, then maybe Acolyte is better. So that's definitely a card we could like sideboard in if we were playing best of three, depending on the matchup. Anything in the sideboard that we might have left out. I don't think we have room for Tolarian Scholar, even though it would be playable in the deck. Explorer would fill a void at four, but overall is quite weak, even though it can also mill ourselves and enable some synergies. And I don't think we have room for Power Stone Shards since our three drops are quite stacked already. Could have used an Eviscerate or maybe a Vicious Offering or two. So we're lacking maybe a one or two removal spells for it to be a great deck, but definitely capable of going the distance with some good draws. Do we want 18 lands? I'm not against it, since we have so many kicker cards, double Skin Witch, double Drake. Yeah, Divest is a sorcery. I guess it combines somewhat well with Conjecture. It gives us something to do early. Still don't love the card though, but I can see why you would want Divest in this deck. Yeah, maybe it's just Acolyte versus the 18th land. I'm not really loving this whole 5-drop situation we've got going on. I think we have to cut one, and I think Acolyte's probably the weaker one. I don't think we want to cut a Dark Bargain, since it's kind of the glue that holds the deck together, making sure we can bridge the early game and the late game. Like, if you put Skin Witch at 6 and Drake at 7, then all of a sudden the curve looks quite a bit different, and you would like to have 18 lands since playing Skin Witch on turn 2 is not a play we are gonna make very happily. Yeah, exactly. We need to hit our fourth land drop before we can cast Dark Bargain, and then Dark Bargain can make sure we don't flood out too badly since we can find more action with it. We also have Memorial as a mana sink that turns into extra cards, 
So I think this is closer to 18 lands than 17 lands. And what card are we cutting? I think the most cuttable card is probably the Acolyte. It's either that or Conjecture, but I think Conjecture is still good enough. All right, let's cut uh, Acolyte. And then we need to figure out the mana base. It looks relatively balanced. Probably just add an island and call it a day. So we've got nine blue sources, nine black sources. I don't think we'll end up flooding since we have Skin Witch that has Kicker at six mana. We've got Academy Drake that has Kicker at a total of seven mana. Double Dark Bargain draws more cards. We've got Rona as a mana sink. Soul Salvage is kind of a mana sink as well. And then Conjecture makes sure we can get back more cards and spend our mana that way. And Memorial can also be activated to draw more cards. I don't think flooding out is going to be our main concern in this deck. I think hitting our land drops is going to be a bigger concern, since if we fall behind on lands, then our draws can become very clunky very quickly. And we've definitely played a fair share of 18 land decks in Dominaria before, just because Kicker kind of incentivizes you to play a few extra lands anyway. Let's play some games. So any predictions on how far this deck will make it? I think if we can get to six wins, I'll be happy. Don't necessarily expect to go all the way. And we'll keep seven. All right, Retort's a good one. All right, opponent's not pressuring us. So we're happy going into the late game with this kind of hand. All right, and now we get to see the power of Dark Bargain. We even have Eldest Reborn to answer an opposing Coldwater Snapper. All right, so what do we want? Knight of Malice is nice since we can play it and still keep up Retort. So I like that one. And I'm probably still taking the land so we can keep hitting our land drops. Omnivore is okay, but don't have the Thalots to synergize with it. So, play Knights, keep up Retorts. Pass a turn. Pank is a Scorcer, we can cast down, so no need to counter that one. We don't need to cast it down right now. Could also just resolve our Eldest Reborn here which is also pretty tempting. Problem with casting Eldest Reborn right now is that it matches up pretty poorly against the Coldwater Snapper since they would get to resolve the Snapper and we would have used our Edict effect. So that's my concern here with playing Eldest Reborn. Yeah, let's attack for three and see what happens. They can't get in to approach it. So let's play the Drake. And then we'll see what they do. If our opponent taps out for Cold Water Snapper, we can just cast down the Courser and then Elster Born the Snapper. And Divination resolves. Next turn we can play Journey Mage for 5 mana and then Retort will only cause double blue so we can still keep it up. So that's probably the play we will make. Sparring Construct, sure. Sparring Construct makes our Eldest Reborn a bit weaker, but that's okay. So, we'll on tap. Sahid is good too. think I'm still tempted to keep up the Retort here, play it safe. So we want a Journey Mage. It's not going to be very subtle. This is one of those situations where the auto tappers leaking information. But that's fine. Bounce the Courser, which is more expensive for them to replay. Does shrink the knights, but still get in for four here. So opponent facing this situation, they're gonna wanna try and double spell as much as they can. If they tap out for a six drop, I think that would be a mistake. Well, 
not technically a 6-drop, I guess, but I'll still counter it. If they have a Syncopate for one, they get to counter Retort, but then we get to cast down plus Eldest Reborn. So let's see if they have the Syncopate here. Looks like they do. So I think we'll make the play we mentioned, cast down Construct, Eldest Reborn, Zahid. Sadly can't cast down Zahid, otherwise that would be the play. And we get a nice big chunk of damage in. And now Skin Witch is going to be pretty effective too. Still have a Zahid of her own. Eldest Reborn taking down, which can also get back Zahid. So I like our position, but anything could happen here. All right, Journey Mage, Bouncing Knights, maybe? Drake, who knows? Opponent kept up double white, so presumably Gideon's Reproach, in which case they want to bounce a Knight of Malice. All right, so their opponents, presumably keeping up a Gideon's Reproach, could also be Adam and Twill here, giving plus two plus two indestructible. Either way, we get to resolve whatever we want, and we can also keep up Syncopate if we decide to play the Knight. We can start by attacking, and if they try and do something, we also have the option of Syncopate. But it looks like they don't even have the Gideon's Reproach, so they're pretty far behind now. I guess it might even be safer to just play the Knight and keep up Syncopate, since our opponent's at 4. And we're gonna be getting back as a heat from Eldest Reborn. I guess we can get back Journey Mage. Yeah, since we're getting back Journey Mage, I think this is safe. Can just use Journey Mage to get rid of a blocker. I don't think I want to skin which when the opponent still has 5 cards in hand. They just have too many cards they can discard that wouldn't be too relevant here. Much better to skin which once they're down to like 2 or 3 cards. Candle, 6 mana to give minus 5, minus 5. Pretty desperate play here. So would we rather reanimate our own creature or the opponent's creature? The problem with animating the opponent's Journey Mage is that if they have a bounce spell, they could bounce their Journey Mage back to their own hand. So I think it makes more sense to get back our own Journey Mage. Problem with getting back our Journey Mage is that if we draw like a Soul Salvage, we can get back Journey Mage from our graveyard. But I'm pretty sure there would be another creature by then. So I think I'll get my own Journey Mage. I guess... At that point, we might as well just get back the Omnivore, since they didn't have a creature in play. Bone goes for Blessed Line instead of Candle, so now we just get to counter this and win the game. I mentally pictured their opponent having a creature in play for some reason. Getting back the Omnivore there makes more sense. Alright, so we're on the draw. This is one of those examples of a hand that would much rather be an 18 land deck than a 17 land deck. So we need to hit two land drops for this hand to be functional. Once we hit our fourth land drop, we can Dark Bargain, which very likely hits our fifth land drop. And then we should be okay. think I'm keeping this on the draw since we're relatively likely to hit our third land drop, at least, for Drake. And with a third land, we could draw like a Thalad which does a pretty good job on defense as well if we're facing a more aggressive deck. But there's definitely a fail rate here. If we never draw third land, we're in trouble. There's a Thalad, so now a third land gives us multiple plays, and there we go. All right, so now we should be good. Lead with the Thalad. Would still like a fourth land, but... At least we won't be discarding to hand size here. Alright, back up Thalad. Sheev and fire, that's fine. Fine. 
5 mana. Right, it's going to be a sergeant at arms instead. 2-3, keeps up 2 mana. And there's our 4th land. I'm happy trading Thalot for sergeants. And if they want to use a Gideon's approach, that's fine by me. And our hand is pretty stacked, as long as we keep hitting our land drops. 3 powerful 5 mana plays, a good 6 mana play. This is basically a 7 mana play at this point. Alright, Fervent Strike. That's fine. So they get to keep their sergeants. No need to main face the Dark Bargain, we're not facing counter spells. Sure. Let's see if the sergeant gets frisky. Does not. Alright, I think I'm just taking Swamp Swamp here. Let's not get too greedy. Eldest Reborn makes him sacrifice sergeants. Sphinx gives us a good blocker for Avon Sentry. I think I like playing the Sphinx. Swamp Swamp. I think I'll bottom both. Even though we might want a 7th land for a kick Drake, I also don't want to risk flooding out. And we're somewhat likely to draw more lands anyway. A 6th land gets us pretty far here. Can always double spell Deep Freeze plus Drake as well. Intervention kills the Sphinx. And one funny thing to notice here is that our opponent could have been attacking us with the Sergeant at Arms, but like psychologically speaking, maybe because we were the ones that were affecting the board first with double Deathbloom Thalad, they kind of have this mentality that we might be the beatdown, but in reality they should probably be happy trading 2 damage for 2 damage, considering we're kind of the control deck in this spot. So if I were the opponent, I would have been attacking with the Sergeant at Arms for sure. But who knows, maybe your opponent has a great late game and they just want to protect their life total at all costs so they can make sure they get to the late game. Bouncing with Journey Mage becomes a lot better once we can counter back with Syncopate, which requires at least one more land. So I think I will still run out Zahid here and hope that uh, Zahid gets to stick around. If her opponent was more aggressive with the Sergeant at Arms, then maybe I would make the Journey Mage play, just because I don't want to take 5 damage or have to chum block. Opponent just says go, so now we're in the driver's seat since we know our opponent doesn't have a clean answer to Zahid, and we can keep up Syncopate for any future answers they might draw. We'll start by attacking. And if they couldn't deal with our first big flyer, then a second big flyer should be a decent addition to the board as well. There's no legendary creatures in place, so Urza's Ruinous Blast is not on my radar. So let's play this. And then maybe next turn, if we draw another land, so we could go Journey Mage and then have Syncopate for X equals 2, which can maybe counter something relevant on the way back. We'll see. Dauntless Bodyguard, that's fine. Protecting Avon Sentry. Aronas, excellent too, can get back Eldest Reborn once it runs out, so that's kind of the, our long-term plan here. Alright, Adamant will the Avon Sentry. Not sure why they wouldn't block first, I guess they want to make sure the Adamant will resolves. So this play is good against a Counterspell on our part. This play is bad if we have a Vicious Offering. Then you would want to block first to at least prevent the damage. I guess we'll counter that. X equals 3. They might also have a Gideon's Approach. Alright, opponent's just gonna concede. Fair enough. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, decent hand, syncopate, cast down, early interaction, Drake on 3, journey major on 5. Happy to draw lands, happy to draw spells that we can cast. Turn 2 scout is kind of scary. Yeah, let's counter that. We're gonna be tapping out next turn for Drake. Syncopate would be a fine turn 4 play, but now Dark Bargain's an even better one. Hmm. 
migration. Got the Dark Bargain Conjecture combo here. I think I'll trade 2 for 2. Alright, Eviscerate, that's fine. So we got our two free points of damage in by attacking. Hmm, no lands, that's kind of a bummer. Definitely taking Sphinx. Rona could get back Conjecture, but that's a very long-term plan. Probably just take the Drake. If they use Eviscerate on the first one, the second one should be good. And if we miss our land drop, then Drake at least gives us a play. So, missing our land drops not great, but our hand is still pretty stacked. Do we trade 2 for 2? With this hand, it's kind of questionable actually. I think I'm gonna stay back. It's possible we shouldn't have attacked in the first place, but it kind of worked out for us since they had an eviscerate anyway. But now I think I'm gonna pump the brakes. Now we can afford to attack, I think. Since I will tap out for the salad. So we're digging pretty deep, did not find a fifth land yet. Probably want to bounce first to force him to spend uh, 6 mana again, and then we can cast down it. And I'll happily attack the Thalad into the Sapperlings here. That's fine by me. Opponent takes 2. If they replay Worm, we can cast down, keep up retorts, attack for 6. So this is totally fine by me. And then uh, we've got Conjecture to maybe get back, cast down or retort. So, opponent is in a bit of trouble. Hopefully they tap out again for an expensive card. Well, I'll counter that one. Attack. Opponent's down to two. We can conjecture, keep up, retort. So that's probably the play here. We do have a wizard in play thanks to the journey mage. And we can counter anything that might go wrong. All right, sweet. All right, so far so good. We're on the play, got a nice turn to Knight of Malice. We're missing the double blue for Retort. Yeah, I think we'll keep. We'll definitely need to draw our second blue source at some point, but... Knight is a, a nice play early. Skin Witch, also a wizard for the Retort, but it's probably not gonna be too relevant. Opponent may be considering main phasing a vicious offering or waiting. We'll attack. Alright, there's a vicious offering. Could play out a skin witch. Could be correct to do so since we already have a six mana play lined up. Making a retort cheaper could be relevant. It is sacrifice fodder for the omnivore. It's one of those interesting spots. And one of the reasons why Dominaria Draft is a fun format, because deciding whether to play out your kicker cards early or waiting is definitely a skill. I think I'm running it out there. Alright, stack for one. We'll try and keep track of how much damage the Skin Witch will deal.
opponent on mono black. Settler scored a Thalad, which exiles it so we don't get uh, Sapperling. That's fine. Let's attack for one. Fourth land for Omnivore, still no double blue for Retort. Still mono black, Acolytes. Alright. Alright, so they are playing white as well. We draw our fifth land as well, so Omnivore is fine to attack. Opponent's gonna probably take it and then get to play the Sphinx. So the threat of activation from having the Skin Witch in play, quite relevant too here. And I'll probably keep the island on top, bottom the swamp, and then hope we don't flood out from here. Sphinx and Omnivore attack. Player land first. Gotta watch out for an opposing Skin Witch kicked next turn as well. If our opponent blocks Acolyte on Omnivore, I don't think I'm sacking because they likely have removal and response. Although we could counter it with a retort, of course, if we wanted to. Fungal Infection, that's fine. So they want to trade Acolyte for Sphinx. I think that's acceptable. And hope they're out of removal here. They've already cast a fair share. Alright, they did not have another removal spell, so we get to untap with Retort, and now we're pretty far ahead. Potent might be stuck with a bunch of white cards in hand that they can't cast. I think I'll start sandbagging some lands in case of an opposing skin witch so we don't have to be forced to counter it. Opponent probably not happy that they haven't found their white mana yet. Scoops it up. Alright. Rank 7. Alright, so on the play, nice hand. Got the Rona plus Elderborn Synergy, so we might wait on Rona until we get full value from Elderborn first. Retort is a good pickup, so next turn we can just keep up Retort instead of running out Rona. Facing Black Green, and they're gonna Vicious Offering main phase. Funny how our previous opponent let us untap first, this opponent decides to main phase it. As it turns out, we would have had the Wizards of Tortat already. I think I'm gonna play it slow here. Sure. Not the most high value targets, but I just want to keep the board clear so Aldous Reborn is more impactful. So just tap out for a Bailoth Gorge or something. Perfect. And now we just gotta wait to get our Rona value. Bone and discards. Wild Onslaughts, let's uh, bounce the ooze here. Definitely reasonable to bounce the elf as well to prevent them casting something expensive. Still have a deep freeze as an answer. Ooh, Blessed Light or Eldest Reborn. That's actually a much better play than our opponent thinks it is, because we also have the Rona, which could have gotten it back. So that's kind of a bummer. So instead of having an easy PC game, we'll have to work for this one. Let's uh, get in there. I guess we'll play a Drake. And then hope for a land next turn so we can skin which whatever they have left in hand. It might not be much. Alright, they're in skin which, fair enough. So we can ditch our skin which and the deep freeze. Keep our Rona as our card draw engine, fly over with a Drake. So, 
that uh, Blasted Light definitely made a pretty big difference. And we'll play out the land since Rona's pretty mana intensive. And there's Ooze again. Memorial's a good one. Which mana do we need to keep untapped? We have a Wizard in play, but we already used our Wizard's Retort. So I guess one of each makes the most sense. Do we need to do it main phase? I guess we can wait. Maybe, let's say our opponent draws into a removal spell. If we exile something amazing with Rona, they might kill Rona. Whereas, if they don't know, then they have the uncertainty of killing Drake or Rona. So there's some value to be had. And any 2-drop we would hit off Rona, I can't think of anything we would want to play right now. Because if we hit, like, a Skin Witch, we're not going to play it as a 1-3. If we hit Cast Down, there's nothing we want to kill. I think we say go. Could also hit a Syncopate, and then Syncopate for 1, unexpectedly. Ooze attacks. I don't think I trade, I just take 2 here. And then end of turn, activate Rona. Alright, kick Gorger, now that's an issue. I messed up, I should have activated Rona in response in case we hit Syncopate. Since we should be able to Syncopate for 1 here. Well, let's hope we don't get punished. Alright, just a Thalad, that's fine. So Thalad can chum block the Gorger for a while. So we can play Thalad and then still activate Rona. Seems fine. Could activate Rona main phase. If we hit like a cast down, we might kill the Gorger. I guess it's worth it since then we also get to attack with a Journey Mage. Dark Bargain instead. Think I'm still playing the Thalad first, even though Dark Bargain's more mana efficient, since I don't want to take seven. Could also triple block, but that seems bad. We're just going to try and leverage our card advantage here. And hope our opponent doesn't top deck too well. Could also take 7 and then maybe have a better d triple block or double block on the Gorger next turn. But since we're going to take a bunch of damage from Dark Bargain, I think we just want to try and preserve our life total as much as we can. Alright, there's our Syncopate. At least our opponent doesn't know about it. So now we just want to probably keep up all our mana. So we can Syncopate if we have to, otherwise we'll Dark Bargain. I'll chum the Gorger. And this is where the Deathbloom Thalad comes in handy. Cast down and Omnivore. Activate Rona. Alright. So, do we want to main phase the cast down on the Gorger? I guess we can wait. Just attack for two. I think I want to keep up Syncopate instead of playing Omnivore, although that's also kind of an interesting decision. Because if we keep up Syncopate instead of playing Omnivore, we might also get to activate Rona. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pass. Got a lot of things we can do at instant speed. I don't think there's a huge downside to waiting on Killing Gorger, since all our creatures would die to an unkicked Vicious Offering anyway, so Kicked Vicious Offering doesn't make a huge difference. And by waiting, we maybe make them only attack with the Gorger instead of being more aggressive with the Corrosive Ooze. And if the board state doesn't change, we're winning pretty easily. So we want to keep up Syncopate if we can. Now for opponent has instant speed removal, there's not much we can do about that. Getting rid of some lands. 14 cards remaining, so not too close to decking yet. Let's keep on attacking. Still have a Zahid, a Sphinx. So we should be okay in terms of finding win conditions. Just want to keep up Syncopate in case they play some huge bomb. Alright, now the Ooze attacks. Yeah, I think I'll trade. Feels maybe unnecessary since we're the ones that should be the aggressor. But they have a Skin Witch and a Lanner Elves back to block Journey Mage anyway. Alright, so that's one we definitely want to counter. 
x equals uh, 4 here because of Lanor Elves. And we can still Dark Bargain. Or we could activate Rona. I think we Dark Bargain, dig a bit deeper. Even though it's not the value play. Could check out her hand with a Skin Witch, or we can tap out for Zahid. Let's see, 6. I guess we can also play an Omnivore. I guess we'll play it safe. Right, it's probably just a land. Let's see what they can come up with. They're dead on board if they draw land. And that does it. Sweet. So far so good. And we're climbing up to number 6 now. Alright, on the draw. Hand seems fine. Thalot into Dark Bargain, hopefully. Find our lands for Sphinx. Conjecture, nice grindy play. So wouldn't mind another island here, but... Still have a turn 4 play lined up. And of turn opt. Keeps on top. And their own Thalad. Do we trade given the chance? Seems fine. So we'll just say go. Omnivore will hit us for three. I'll happily trade tokens. Opponent passes, we'll dark bargain. And we'll have to wait and see here. If they want to counter this, that's fine. Opponent dark bargains in response. Alright, what do we want? So Soul Salvage plays great with Conjecture, even if it's in the graveyard. I think I want a land and a Rona. Rona can get back Conjecture eventually. But having Soul Salvage in the graveyard and resolving Conjecture is a pretty big deal. Now the only problem is we're taking a bit of damage from this Omnivore in the meantime. But if we play Conjecture next turn, we get to return Bargain and then Soul Salvage. We'll have all the card advantage in the world. Just need to kind of answer the board. But if we play Sphinx, they're just going to kill it and attack us again. So it's kind of an interesting decision. I mean, we could also make a case for playing Sphinx. They kill it and then we play Zahid and hopefully they don't kill that one. If we play Conjecture, we're going to be super far ahead on cards. Considering we also have Rona to get it back eventually. I'm just a bit worried that we might be taking a bit too much damage in the meantime. If our opponent adds another threat to the board and then kills the Sphinx or Zahid if we play it, we're going to be pretty far behind and we won't be able to leverage all those extra cards. Alright, we'll play a Sphinx. And alright, Deep Freeze looks good. Now do we want a Skin Witch to attack our opponent's hand? Although I guess we don't have triple blue so we can go Deep Freeze plus Keep Up Retort which is a little awkward. So maybe we actually draw the Skin Witch first. Not entirely sure on that one. Alright, Eldest Reborn. It's too bad. So it would have worked out better had we just played Conjecture. If we play Conjecture right now, we get back Dark Bargain. Next turn we get back Soul Salvage, and we can Soul Salvage both our creatures before our opponent gets to steal it with Eldest Reborn. But I guess it would still be able to get back a Thalad anyway. Because right now they would be getting back Cloud Reader Sphinx. Our life total is dwindling, so casting Dark Bargain again is going to be sketchy. Yeah, I don't like our position. Let's just kick the Skin Witch. Alright, opponent splashing white for Wrath. What do we discard? Probably Swamp. 
difference between six and seven isn't huge, considering we only have two blue sources. And I might chum the Omnivore here. Although that's maybe a bit too aggressive. Scholar. Alright, so basically if Zahid sticks around we're fine, if they kill Zahid we're in trouble. I think we gotta go for it, if they kill Zahid we can get it back with Rona, but it's pretty slow. But I think we have to try. Keeping the Skin Witch in play also makes her a torch cheaper, which is relevant to notes. Opponent's gonna get back our Sphinx. Yeah, they could have more white cards in hand that they couldn't cast. Definitely possible. One top, one bottom. And then we kind of want to draw an island. So we can keep up a retort while progressing our board. And drawing a bounce ball for our own Sphinx would be quite good too. Surveyor, no shuffle since they want to keep the top card. So just a 1-2 here. So that Omnivore gets to attack. So yeah, we have to chump, otherwise we're dead. If we block with Zahid, they sack two creatures, and that's bad for us. So yeah, we have to chump and then next turn deep freeze and hope to draw a blue source so we can keep up a retort. But if they kept the removal spell for Zahid on top and we don't draw the island, which we did not, then it's not looking good. If they do kill Zahid, we're taking 6, but I don't see us coming back from this. If we play Rona, we would take 5 down to 4. I think we'll play Rona. Also possible we should keep land in hand to play around Skin Witch. Offering Rona, that's fine. So hopefully no removal for Zahid. Saddle the score, kept on top, so yeah, we're dead here. Take six down to three. Yeah, the difference a color of mana can make. If we did have an extra blue source, we get to keep up retorts. We get to counter the settled score, they don't get to tank past Zahid. And then we get to leverage conjecture to win the late game. But now we're just dead. Alright, GG's. So what should we have done differently that game? Maybe instead of keeping Skin Witch on top, we just keep the Deep Freeze on top, maybe just bottom the skin witch all together to try and find triple blue at some point. Alright, we're on the play. Hand looks fine. A bit slow, but Omnivore into Eldestreborn is a pretty powerful sequence. Alright, let's see if we finally get to combine Rona with Eldestreborn. A unicorn on two. Death Bloom to the rescue here. Oh no, we forgot to change the basic lands for this deck. Oh well. Trapper. It's your opponent with a pretty aggressive looking deck here. Playing one skin witch here is probably fine, so we can double block Trapper if they tap down Omnivore. Just try and hold until we can deploy Elderborn and leverage that. Opponent does nothing. Could be aggressive with Omnivore, but I don't think we have to with this hand. Even their opponent might be missing a color, in which case being aggressive might be better. Yeah, let's go for it. Opponent doing nothing is kind of a sign of weakness. Alright, there's a blue mana. And a historic spell, so we kind of get punished for the attack now. Just a servant attacking, so pretty conservative. Opponent may be fearing a fungal infection on the trapper. 
think now I'm gonna stay back with Omnivore even though we could attack. Just wanna be able to block Baird. Well, as time goes on, Elserborn gets a bit clunkier, since their opponent will have more things to sacrifice. Arcane Flight Baird. Well, a traditional control deck would be happy to see that, but we don't have a ton of spot removal. So we'll have to try and double block Drake and Sphinx and hope that works out. Yeah, things could get ugly. Courser, so now a ton of flying creatures all of a sudden. So if they have removal for Sphinx or Drake, we're very dead. Cast down can kill Baird. So might as well attack with Omnivore now and then we could end up using cast down on Courser. Opponent takes it. Do we main phase this cast down? Probably do. Take three. We can gain a bit of life back with the Omnivore. Alright, finally fifth land, but now our opponent does have five mana up, so they could have a counterspell. I think we still Eldest Reborn before we Sphinx. Hope it's not a Syncopate, so we can at least get back Eldest Reborn with Rona. Alright, so Eldest Reborn resolves. Blessed Light Omnivore, fair enough. So they could have gotten rid of Eldest Reborn, they decided not to. Since they have an Evra. Yeah, more historic creatures here. Well, at least we get to empty their hands altogether if we play a Skin Witch. Evra we can try and block, and then we can play the Sphinx to double block Baird and be kind of stable. I think we go for it. Uh, they had their own Sphinx. So we could be okay if our opponent doesn't top deck removal. I'll happily trade for Evra. Trapper attacks as well. And then we could decide to chum block the Trapper. We're gonna get back a Sphinx from the opponent presumably here. Which is pretty solid and play our own Sphinx. Yeah, I think I do chum block. Alright, so now we could also get back Avra, but I think it makes more sense to get back the Flyer and then play our own Flyer. Hope they don't have a Bounce spell for it. Alright, Dark Bargain seems bad when we're at 7, Knight seems medium. It does have protection from the Trapper so they can't tap it down and it's a cheap play we can make. I think I'll bottom. And then... Play Rona, get back Eldest Reborn so we can play it next turn. For now we can block the Baird. And then the question is, do we Soul Salvage? I think we do. And get back Skin Witch plus Drake. Skin which just being a cheap play we can make alongside Elder Born if we have to. Alright, we'll see here. Point's got a land, attacks, we'll block. Alright, cast Elder Born. We can't keep up retorts since we don't have any wizards in play. But I'm still gonna go for it here. And then we're not forced to play out the Skin Witch. Can hold that. Although, let's see. If we play Skin Witch next turn, we can have a 2 mana Retort. Plus 5 mana for Sphinx, so maybe it is worth it.
Since they probably kept the land in hand anyway. Since they saw we got back the Skin Witch. Trickster tap down Sphinx, attack for three. Alright. Play out a land. They don't have to discard and deep freeze to the rescue. Alright, so now we're feeling a lot better about things. I think it makes more sense to still play the Sphinx and then keep a retort instead of having to use a deep freeze. I'll keep a Thalad. Alright. So we've got a way to get rid of the flyer. And we've got a bunch of flyers ourselves, so we should be able to close out the game here. And I guess we can get back Avra here. Seems better than a Courser. Although it's kind of close since we want to fly over. But a 4-4 is pretty big. And this can gain us a bit of life as well. Very important we keep up our Tort in case they have any bounce spells. Does Deep Freeze remove the ability that forces us to pay? Yeah, it does. So... Attack. And we can close out the game in a couple of turns here. Juggernaut is fine. So we can attack with Avra. I'm happy if it trades. Got some blockers back. Don't want to tap out for a kick Drake since then we won't have her tort up, so I'm just gonna play out this Thalot for now. Alright, GG's. Change the land art. Alright, fine. Let's change the land art. Let's add some fancy Dominaria basics here. Alright, that's better. So we're on the play with single blue for a torch, sadly, but Skin Witch has an early blocker, Dark Bargain to hit our land drops, and an Eldest Reborn. So I think this is reasonable enough. Mountain, Lava Runner. Alright, well, we're definitely playing Skin Witch. Drawing Conjecture, not great, since we're not going to have time to deploy it. Conjecture hasn't really performed in this particular deck yet. Alright. Well, we would really appreciate an island here. Alright, that's a fine play for now. Spider. Alright, there's a land. So now we can Dark Bargain end of turn. And start deploying our 5 drops. And we can Retort if we have to. Take 3. That's fine. Opponent respecting the counterspell there, so they might be sandbagging something. Definitely want land, and Thalad, I think, over Salvage. We can get Salvage back with Conjecture. So I think the play this turn is to play a 5-drop, and then next turn we can go Thalad plus Keep Up Retort. And then the question is, do we Elserborn now, or do we Sphinx now? Sphinx can technically block Spider. Eldest Reborn makes him sacrifice one of these two small creatures. But the discard is irrelevant now, whereas they might be empty-handed if we wait on Eldest Reborn. So it's kind of close. I think I'm leaning Sphinx. It's 
Sahid looks good. Don't need another salad. All right, so Sahid might save the day here. Six toughness is a lot to get through for a red-green deck. Opponent activates Memorial, that's fine. Rada's pretty scary. Runs it out there. All right, if they have a pump spell, they can play off the mana they get. We're in trouble. Would love to see a no attacks. All right, the two big ones get in there. All right, never mind. Everyone gets in there. So our opponent makes a million mana. Next turn we're drawing Zahid. So if we kind of force the opponent to use a removal spell now on the Sphinx instead of on Zahid or a pump spell, maybe that's not such a bad thing. Opponent made four green. Could be the kicker on tap plus four plus four spell. If we want to kill one of the big ones, we have to double block. So maybe we just block the two small ones, which also sets up Eldest Reborn a little bit better. I guess it makes more sense to block the other way around. This at least forces them to cast a spell if they want to have these trade, which may be good enough here. They pump the War Caller. Alright, there's a Gift of Growth. Throw his trade. We get a Chumper. But now Zahid might be safe, which is the thing we care about here. I don't think we can afford to play Thalad and keep up Retort, because we're just not going to have the blockers to make profitable blocks. Technically, we could double block Rada and only take 5, but 5 when we're at 9 is pretty sketchy. I think the play is play Zahid, hope they can get past it, and then as soon as we get to untap with Retort up, we're pretty far ahead. Yeah, I think so. Hopefully they don't have a main deck plummet effect here. Opponent looking at their graveyard. Growth Spiral. Or what's the name? All right, opponent passes, excellent. So that's a weight off our shoulders. Don't have a wizard in place, so we can go 5 drop plus keep up retort. So I think I'm going to play it conservatively. Make sure we keep up retort at all times. And just play our Thalad for now. Yeah, Nature Spiral is the one that can get back something from the graveyard. Alright, so land would have been a good draw since then we could have played a 5 drop keep up retort. Now we'll just play Knight. Opponent might have some expensive cards in hand that they can't cast. I would happily cast a retort here, so if we draw land we can conjecture, get back retort and still keep up retort. Could be a kicked Gidu Chronicler, makes sense as well. Yep. Frenzied Rage Rada. So it would become a 5-5 five, five Menace. I think that's fine. Can still double block and then counter whatever trick they have to try and kill Zahid. Alright, so the safest blocks are probably Thalad plus Knight. The more daring block is Zahid plus something else. But blocking Zaid plus something else forces them to play something to save Rada. Whereas blocking Thal plus Knight maybe doesn't. I think we go for it. Zaid and then a 1-1 one -one probably makes the most sense. They would have to have two things for a total of 5 mana, which they could have, but hopefully they don't. Could be a pump spell. Alright, Radiating Lightning makes sense as well. But we're going to counter that. Otherwise Zahid would die. And then land would be excellent here. All right, Journey Mage isn't bad either. If we play Journey Mage, then next turn we get to Conjecture, Keep Up Retort. So I guess that makes sense. And we'll bounce the Spider, which has the biggest board presence. And I think Zaid can sneak in an attack. I'll keep the other ones back in case of any haste shenanigans. Alright, Primordial Worm, that's fine. Now we get to attack. Play Conjecture. Get back Retort, keep up Retort. And then next turn get back Soul Salvage. And 
And we've got a decent double block on the worm. Opponent with a spider and an unknown in hand could be something that affects the graveyard, the Gitu Chronicler. Nature Spiral, which was my first instinct. Getting back Rada. That seems okay. We can just counter Rada. I mean, we don't have to counter Rada, but it seems fine. It's not a game-winning play, but if they resolve Rada, they could attack with Worm and Rada, and then we've got a double block on the Worm, but not on Rada, so things could get, get messy. Waiting for a turn doesn't make a ton of sense, since we only have two creatures in the graveyard. Skin Witch also not too useful. Could also decide to run out Eldest Reborn instead. I think this is better. And Syncopate seems fine. So next turn our opponent has to chum block Zahid, take three, down to two. They might be dead to an attack from everyone, not sure. Alright, Crows and Druid gain ten. So we'll have to play a little bit longer. And Syncopate protects us from a kicked fight with fire that could potentially kill us here. Alright, so let's attack. And we should have lethal next turn. Syncopate the... Mama Spider. Opponent's got... Ooh, Multani. Well, Syncopate's the perfect answer to Multani. So, not quite. Would have been pretty good otherwise. Alright, so Zahid manages to stabilize us, and we're back to number 6. Sweet. And the draft at 7 and 1, not bad. I was kind of aiming for 6 wins, so getting to 7 with only 1 loss is definitely exceeding my expectations. Let's crack some packs. Karn's Temporal Sundering, fun build around as well. Could maybe try this with some Planeswalkers at some point. Pack 1, pick 1. I don't think I'd take Temporal Sundering early. Probably just blink of an eye. And the first eruption is not very good. This entire pack is kind of bad. I'll take whatever the best uncommon is, probably like a fight with fire. And the War of the Spark pack for good measure. Dumri is quite good. Is it better than Obnixil's Cruelty? I think it's close. Like, Cruelty keeps you in one color, pretty flexible, goes into any deck. Domri commits you to at least two colors. Of course, a green deck can let you splash pretty easily. And Domri is an okay splash card, so could go either way. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.